Hello! My name is Alice and today I want to show you how I use the Aquafine inks to create my artwork. Aquafine inks are by Dela Rowney and they just launched last year. They are pigment based light fast watercolor inks and they can be rewetted time and time again. The line currently has 20 different colors as well as two metallics which are silver and gold. These inks are ready to use right out of the dropper or they can be watered down just like a normal watercolor and applied in washes and built up in layers. They're also able to be used for things like airbrushing, using with calligraphy pens. There are even empty markers that you can refill with these inks to create your own watercolor based ink markers. You can pretty much do just about anything that you can imagine with these inks. So I was challenged to use my imagination. So I started off with sketching on this Canson watercolor paper and I used the inks to create this piece. I'm calling this piece Electric Pool. And I began by sketching out the portrait of the face that is the focus of the picture. It's a face and I've exaggerated the colors and played with certain textures and incorporating different photographic elements to create kind of a collage effect that's then painted. So I have that sketched out. I applied some masking fluid just to protect the figure while I worked on the background. And I like to paint from the background through to the foreground. So this is a natural starting point for me. After applying the masking fluid, I started to build up the background and I worked in wet on wet to achieve a really smooth gradient. I worked with a mixture of the ink Cerulean Hue, Ultramarine Blue Dark, Cobalt Blue Hue, as well as Quinacridone Magenta and Ultramarine Pink. After I laid down the wet on wet gradient, I used some paper towel to lift off color to create a clouded effect. And then I used a darker, more concentrated ink to define the edges and add more variance to the cloudy dreamlike vibe in the background. I wanted the whole piece to have a very dreamlike quality. So it was really important to me to be able to create texture with these inks, which they do really well. Before I remove the masking fluid, I also used some opaque yellow ink by the Dela Rowney System 3 line to define some yellow line art that's going to be floating behind the final portrait. These inks are extremely compatible with a variety of other media, so it makes them really flexible to use in mixed media work. So after my ink dried and I removed the masking fluid, I moved on to painting the shirt. The shirt is inspired by a photo of pool water and it's superimposed over her body so it flattens out and confuses the visual perspective for the viewer. I used layers of the blue inks and I started with a wet on wet wash to establish the overall base color. Then I was able to start building the inks up to create a deeper, more rich color and add more shading. These inks built up so wonderfully and I was really able to use all of the different tones to create interest in a very monochromatic area of the piece. When you're working with just one color, it can be hard to create interest and variance, but I found that these colors worked really, really well together in order to create an effect that was varied, but still had a monochromatic all blue kind of look. They built up really well. I started out with the paper quite wet and then I moved on to it being damp and working wet on damp and eventually towards the end when I was adding in the much sharper details that really define the waves and peaks of the pool, I was using a wet on dry technique to get those really fine lines and details. You can also really see the intermixability of the inks here as well. Because the Aquafine inks are so translucent, I decided to create a contrast on the shirt between varying opacities. In order to do this, I used an opaque white from the System 3 line and I mixed that in to the Aquafine inks to tint the opacity and the color of the inks and to layer up those brighter highlights on the surface of the water. So that was really, really useful in order for me to create more juxtaposition and variance in the piece when you look at it. And I was able to add some really, really nice details with that. So these work so well in conjunction with the rest of the inks that Dela and Rowney produces. So once I was done with the shirt, I moved on to the skin tones and skin tones are my favorite thing to paint. 
I think that when you look at skin, you can see so many different tones and colors in there. There are purples, blues, oranges, yellows, greens, and I love to exaggerate and bring out those colors. I think it makes skin look more interesting and more vibrant, and I think that you can really play with the tones that you exaggerate and the certain colors that you bring out in skin and use that to create the overall tone and atmosphere and feel of this piece. For me, I really wanted my piece to look very dreamlike and have kind of a very vaporwave almost style and aesthetic to it. I was very inspired by, the, by those specific colors of blue, purple, and pink. So when I was looking at the skin tones, I decided that I wanted to highlight more of the purples and the pinks and pull those out even further. So because I like to enhance the colors and vibrance in the skin tones, it really helps that these inks are so, so pigmented and it made it really, really easy. I started building the face and neck and hands and I built this up a little bit differently. I moved in sections lay down some color, use my paper towel to dab it up in the lighter sections, and then continue to block out the face and neck moving around the piece as I went. I frequently use the technique of mixing on the page, especially when I'm working with skin tones. What I will do is I will take a very pure, bright, pigmented color and then I will actually mix it on the page with a few other colors and allow the water and the paints to blend together themselves. And frequently what that does is that will tone down that color just enough, but still allow that vibrancy and that brightness to show through, allowing you to really enhance the different tones in skin. These inks layer really, really well without getting muddy at all, and so layering and shading was made so much easier because of that. I slowly built up the color and considered to exaggerate it, and as you can see, these inks are super, super bright. One really unique thing about them that I mentioned earlier is that they are pigment-based. That makes their colors a lot brighter than dye-based ink, and it makes them more light fast, which is going to preserve the durability of your artwork and make it last for years to come instead of fading in the light. Another thing that made me really, really excited about this is because they are pigment-based, they're actually going to granulate, and you're, when you use a rougher surface, a more textured surface, those pigments are going to settle into the grooves of the paper, and you're going to get beautiful, subtle textures when you're working with those rougher surfaces. The final chunk of painting that I had to really complete was the hair. As is my process, I started with a wet on wet wash to establish the color theme. I felt like things were a little too strong so I lifted most of it off with a paper towel, leaving a light stain. Because they're so translucent, these inks can be used in lots of layers of glazes and stains to build up depth. After this, I established the overall areas of shading and blocked out the general shadows. And then, and only then, is when I started getting into the details. I wait to get into the details until I have an overall idea of where the light is hitting, because this makes sure that you're taking into account the shape of the head and the shape of the skull before you're taking into account all of the different variances in the hair texture. After that, I continue to just build the strands of hair up until I was satisfied with the result. So this picture actually took me quite a few weeks to complete of on again and off again work in so many different sessions. And I really wanted to mention that because these inks are unlike a lot of inks out there and they are actually able to be reactivated with water. So just like a regular watercolor, you can leave these inks to dry on a palette and you can come back and re-wet them later. So this was extremely, extremely helpful to me when working on a piece that took multiple sessions as I didn't have to worry about remixing certain shades. That said, these inks are in thick glass bottles with droppers and they're very, very versatile. So you could get an empty ink bottle and mix your own custom ink shades that you frequently use. You can refill empty markers with them, like I mentioned earlier, or you can use them in airbrushes. There's so many different ways and techniques to use these inks. Finally, I use the same opaque yellow ink to add in the remainder of the contrasting liner on top of the finished piece, and then I went over that with black ink to add in the final black lines to contrast sharply against the yellow and to tie the whole piece in together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process for creating this piece and picked up some ideas for your own artistic projects.